Problems on the sliding window algorithm are really fun to solve. That is because you can actually see how the window is sliding and how are you coming up with the solution. One such problem is finding the maximum number of vowels in a substring of a given length. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we will cut some sample test cases. Going forward, we will start with the most obvious solution and then try to optimize our solution and look at how the window is actually sliding. After that, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. Talking about the problem statement, I feel that it is pretty straightforward. You are given a string and you have to find out the maximum vowels you can find in a substring that has the length k. So what does that mean? For example, I have this particular test case, right? The value of k is 3. This string can have a lot of different substrings with the same length 3, correct? So for example, ABC is a substring of length 3. Then IDE is also a substring of length 3. Similarly, you have all of these different substrings which have the same length 3. And out of all of these substrings, you have to tell me in which of them you can find the maximum number of vowels. And you just have to tell me that, hey, these are the maximum number of vowels that I can find. You don't have to identify the string itself. So for the first test case, you can see that this substring, III, I, this has a length of 3 and you can find 3 vowels, right? There cannot be more than 3. So for the first test case, 3 will be your answer. Similarly, when you look at your second test case, now if you notice, all of these characters are vowels, right? But the value of k is 2. That means you can choose a substring that has a maximum of 2 characters. So no matter whichever substring that you pick, you will get a maximum of 2 vowels, right? So, for your second test case, 2 is your answer. Similarly, if you look at the third test case, the value of k is 4. And if you notice, there are two such strings, udya and algo. Both of them have the length 4 and both of them have two vowels, right? So, you can choose any of them because you don't have to tell me which substring has the maximum number of vowels. But how many vowels did you find? You found a total of two vowels in your maximum substring, right? So for the third test case, two will be your answer. So if this makes the problem statement a lot more clear, feel free to stop the video right over here and try the problem on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Let us say you have the sample test case. The value of k is three, correct? Now, if you think about the problem, what is the most obvious way that comes to your mind? The most obvious and the brute force solution will be that, okay, you start finding out all the substrings. So this is my first substring ABC and out of this string, how many are vowels? All of these are vowels, right? And only A is a vowel. So in the first substring, you could just find a maximum of one vowel, right? So you just record that, okay, I found one vowel in this. Moving ahead, what you can do is now start from the second character and then find a substring of length three. Now, how many vowels do you find? You once again find just one vowel. So you can once again record this value. Similarly, what you're going to do is now start with the third character and then once again get a substring of the length three. So this time my string is CII, right? And how many vowels you can find? You can find a maximum of two vowels. So once again, you will record this value. So basically what you're doing is you start from each character one by one and try to find a substring. And then you will keep on doing it all throughout the entire string, correct? Once you're done with your complete iteration, you can check which value was the maximum and then yes, that will be your answer, right? So this method works and in fact, it will give you a correct answer every time. But do you see the problem with this approach? Every time you are trying to calculate your substring, right? And for every substring, you are again trying to find out, okay, how many are vowels? How many are vowels? How many are vowels? So this ends up taking a lot of time and this is not what we desire. Certainly, we can try to come up with a better approach. So let's see what we can do about it. Once again, I have my sample test case over here, right? And the value of k is 3. To start thinking about an optimal solution, first try to analyze what was the problem in the brute force approach. In our last approach, we were every time calculating a new string, right? And that was taking up a lot of time. If you think about the problem, you have to look at a substring of length 3, correct? 
and all of these characters they will be contiguous right so it is guaranteed that you are only looking at three characters at a time this kind of gives me an idea that a sliding window algorithm might be helpful over here if you're new to sliding window algorithms you can also check out my introductory video over there that will really help you to understand what does a sliding window algorithm actually looks like so let me take up a window right so this window is telling me that i am looking at only three characters at a time correct just a b c and what else you have five vowels right so i take up a hash set and i add all of these vowels to my hash set a hash set ensures that i will get a time complexity of order of 1 because you can look in the hash set in a constant time correct so how do we proceed ahead first of all i look at my window and then i check hey how many of these characters are vowels i check that hey is a a vowel yes is b a vowel no is c a vowel no so in my first window how many vowels did i have i just had one vowel correct so i just store this value over here now what you're going to do is you will simply slide your window and by slide i literally mean slide as soon as you slide what happens your new character is i correct so check is i a vowel yes you can find it over here so what i simply do is i increment this value now my value is 2 but wait a minute you also removed a certain character right and you need to check hey did i remove a vowel so once again you look in your hash set that is order of one time complexity correct so you can say that hey i removed a vowel so once again just decrement this count and you will say that hey i can still find just one vowel in my window now simply keep on moving this process ahead take this window and slide it one step ahead as soon as you slide it what is the next character you get you get an i again you check is i a vowel yes so what i will do i will increment this value at the same time you will check which character did i remove i removed a b and b is not a vowel so this value remains constant and this is 2 so as you are sliding this window keep a track of how many maximum vowels are you able to find up till now you have found a total of 2 vowels right so similarly just keep moving ahead slide this window one step ahead as soon as you slide it what character do you see you see an i i is also a vowel so you need to update this value and this becomes 3 and at the same time you will update this value and it becomes a 3 what happens next if you observe the value of max vowels has now reached 3 and the value of k is also 3 so if you want you can stop over here because if you go ahead you will never have a value greater than this right that is greater than k so if you are writing the code you can simply add a condition and stop over here but just for learning purposes you can try to analyze what happens next so what happens when i slide my window one step ahead i add a new character d right so is d a vowel no it's not so do not do anything with this value as of now but at the same time look at what character are you removing you are removing an i so this tells you that you are removing a vowel so decrement this value by 1 now you check if 2 greater than 3 no so you do not have to update your max vowels so basically what you are doing is as you are sliding your window ahead if you encounter a vowel just increment this value and at the same time if you are removing a vowel then decrement this value by 1 just keep on moving ahead and keep a track of the maximum value that you are getting once you are done this will be your answer so you can see how in just one pass using the sliding window algorithm we were able to arrive at an efficient solution now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action before moving ahead i would just like to say that if you do like my content consider joining my channel and becoming a member it really supports me to keep on bringing all of this quality content to you let's get back to it on the left side of your screen you have the actual code to implement this solution and on the right i have a value of k and a sample string that is passed in as a input parameter to the function max vowels now moving on with the dry run what is the first thing that we do first of all we create two variables that will store our values max vowels and the window vowels right now both of them are zero right because we haven't done anything max vowels is going to store what is the maximum number of vowels are you able to find and window vowels are going to store 
how many vowels are you able to find in the current window so moving ahead my next step is obviously to create a hash fit this hash fit will store all of my vowels so i can quickly access and look hey is this character a vowel hey is this character a vowel so this will help to speed up all of my operations right moving ahead with a dry run we now count how many vowels do i have in my first window my first window will be of the three characters right a b and c so how many vowels can you find over here only a is a vowel right so i will increment my count of window vowels and that changes to one since you have to start somewhere you just point that max vowels is also equal to your window vowels because that is also a possibility everything is now set up the next part is starting a for loop this for loop is responsible for sliding your window all the way to the very end so as soon as you move to the next step you check hey the character that i'm removing is it a part of vowels yes so you are going to do window vowels minus minus because now you reduced one character and at the same time you are going to check hey the new character i added does the vowels hash set contain it yes so you are going to do window vowels plus plus so the window went one step ahead but the window vowels remained the same right this is for this particular test case eventually when your window will move ahead you are going to include another vowel and this will increment the window vowels count right and at every iteration you just keep a track of the max vowels so once your loop ends completely this variable max vowels this is going to hold what is the total number of vowels that you were able to find for this particular test case three will be your answer and this is ultimately returned over here as max vowels the time complexity of this solution is order of n where n is the length of the string and the space complexity of this solution is order of 1 because you just need a constant space to store your vowels in a hash fit i hope i hope you able to simplify the problem and its solution for you as per my final thoughts i just want to say that whenever you see problems on substrings and subarrays the most important question that you must ask your interviewer is is the element of the substring contiguous or are the elements of the subarray contiguous because that changes the problem a lot so it is better to clarify these doubts first rather than trying to just dive into the solution and try to come up with something you might be surprised that how a small statement can differ your entire solution so while going through our this video did you face any problems or have you seen any other problems which are based on the sliding window algorithm tell me all of them in the comment section below and i would love to discuss all of it with you it will be also helpful for anyone else who is watching the video and you will have a compiled list of all such problems that will be really amazing As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.